Barrow Trauma is a game about piloting submarines deep within an alien ocean, where you work to complete tasks in a network of underwater outposts. Along the way, you'll have to fend off hostile creatures in the environment, and inevitably things will go bad as the odds are stacked against you. That is all I knew about Barrow Trauma before my first playthrough, and I wouldn't have it any other way. See, I am the type of person that really enjoys discovering things naturally in the games I play, rather than watching guides beforehand, as nothing compares to the satisfaction of figuring things out on your own. With all that being said, if you're like me and you enjoy games without spoilers of any kind, I'd encourage you to give Barrow Trauma a shot before watching this video if it sounds like something you're interested in. You can play it solo or with a group of friends, and I picked up Barrow Trauma on Steam during a sale for around 7 US dollars. Anyways, let's dive into the journey that led me into the darkness of the abyss. I started by carefully choosing a submarine and assembling a crew of lean, mean, seafaring machines. With my crew and ship assembled, the game began. We were a small crew of three, stranded on Europa and cut off from humanity, and we were eager to make a name for ourselves. Before we could leave our home station, we needed supplies, namely fuel rods to power the vessel and welding fuel to keep our tools functional in the case of hull damage. We pooled our money and I went aboard the station to purchase the goods as well as to search for leads on a potential job. I should also mention that I spent several minutes poking around the ship just to see what I was working with and I came to the conclusion that this game is far more complex than I initially expected. We had a whole host of medical supplies ranging from basic bandages all the way up to something called calizanide, which is apparently used to cure uh, husk parasites, whatever that is. Also on the ship was a whole array of gauges, buttons, and consoles, and I had no idea what to do with any of them, so I decided not to touch anything. Okay, I made it onto the station, I bought the stuff we needed, and I found a job for the crew. All we had to do was haul some construction materials from this outpost to another one. Sounds easy enough, right? It actually was, uh, it, at least for the most part. I actually think I should mention that there is a tutorial that is, quote, strongly recommended, but I said, screw it, I'm here for a blind playthrough and I'm gonna get one. Anyways, it actually took me quite a while to figure out how to undock the ship and leave the station. I finally figured it out though, and so we were off. I didn't really know what to do with the crew, so I assigned them random tasks as I sat in the navigation console, guiding the sub along. I was terrified of the ominous blue shapes in the distance the entire time, but we made it to the next station safely. By some miracle, the seas were quiet today, but it wouldn't stay that way for long. After several failed docking attempts, I finally figured things out and the trip became an official success. I delivered the cargo and began exploring the outpost. There were merchants everywhere, doctors, mechanics, arms dealers, you name it. Once again, I was realizing how much there was to this game. There were countless items, but I was only here to buy some ammunition and more fuel for our next trip. We had everything we needed, and so our small crew of sailors departed for the next mission. We did get a little lost, but in the end we did manage to make it to another station. It was at this point that I decided to stock up on gear and try something a bit more dangerous. Nearby there was a group of hostile creatures that had been causing issues, so there was a hefty reward for the crew that managed to take them out. In addition to that, a uranium deposit had been recently discovered in the area, so it was up for grabs. On board the station, I picked through the trader's wares, and a few things in particular caught my eye. First up, an accordion to boost morale, because there's nothing like being stuck in a Pringles tube a thousand meters under with a psycho accordion player. And item number two was this pipe, because you can't be a good ship captain without a fat pipe. The rest of my purchases weren't as important, and on my way out I bumped into what I assume is the local drunk. He rambled on about human-alien hybrids, and I took it as my cue to leave. With all of our newly acquired gear, we climbed down into our sub and got ready to leave. After patching leaks and fixing electrical issues, we began our descent into the darkness. Our mission was to hunt for the nearby swarm of monsters, but they were already hunting us. Pretty much immediately after leaving the station, they were on us. I had the crew man the guns, but it was too late. They were below us, and the hull was already severely damaged. Water began to fill the rooms, and our vessel stopped responding to my input at the navigation console, so I rushed out to see what was going on. Things weren't looking good, and I saw the alien horrors were inside the ship. I promptly retreated back to my control room. 
I had to get the sub back up to the station so we could fight these things off or evacuate. I also figured out how to use the sonar in all of this mess. I tried desperately to get the sub moving, but it wouldn't budge. We were stranded over 1300 meters down and it finally hit me. The sub won't move because it's full of water. We were truly alone and it was up to us to survive this. I felt trapped in the control room as it was the only compartment not full of water and I had no dive suit so there wasn't much I could do. The radio chatter was unending and things were getting worse. The ship had sustained heavy damage and now my crewmates were being ripped to shreds. It was at this point I realized I'd have to make a final stand. The only hope we had was to kill these aliens before the crew was wiped out. I readied my pistol and then remembered the pipe I had bought. Now seemed like a good time for a last smoke, so I raised the pipe to my lips, and the pipe was empty. I hadn't bought anything to load the pipe with. It seemed fate was laughing at us, but now I was double fisting it. Pipe in one hand, pistol in the other. I was ready to face anything, so I opened the door. With one alien dead, I frantically tried to close the door and I ended up reopening it, getting hit by a wall of water and then smashing my head in the door as it closed again. I wound up concussed and panicked as my breath of air was running out. I flailed about trying to find an air pocket and luckily the compartment was still sealed and the water pump saved me, draining out enough water in the nick of time. There was still at least one alien left though. I think at this point, Bo, our mechanic, had been mauled to death, but I could still see our engineer fighting for her life through the door. I tried to open it so she could take refuge in the control room, but she decided to reopen the door and go back out, leaving me to drown in the resubmerged room. I thought this would be it for sure, but by some miracle I held on long enough to get more air. At this point I didn't want to reopen the door as I still didn't have any kind of diving gear, so I decided to switch over and take control of Layla, the engineer. She was in the reactor room along with Bo's mangled remains. It was gruesome, and I could now see the extensive damage that the ship had sustained firsthand. Things weren't looking good, but regardless, I scrambled to repair what I could. Mid-repair, I could feel something behind me, and sure enough, the monsters were back, and it was once again a desperate fight for life. It looked like Ben the captain had managed to get into a dive suit somehow, but Layla had sustained serious wounds and I barely managed to get her into the ship's underbelly, where she was relatively safe for the time being, but it seemed like it might have been too late. She was slowly slipping into the darkness in the cramped underbelly of the sub. Surprisingly, with his new dive suit, Ben managed to kill off the remaining swarm creatures and Layla had sort of had a second wind, but it was uh, definitely too late. Her oxygen was running low, so I scrambled around the ship hoping to find an extra tank, but I had no luck. My last hope was to get her to the control room, where last I'd seen there was no water. The room was now full though, and this time Layla wouldn't be catching a second wind. Now, all I had left was Ben, the captain. I wasn't delusional, so I knew there was absolutely no chance of me getting this operational again on my own, so I pretty much only had one option, and that was to grab as much as I possibly could of the supplies we had left and abandon ship. We hadn't made it very far from the station, so I knew it was roughly still pretty much directly above us. Swimming hundreds of meters in the dark with no navigation was an extremely slim shot, but it was the only thing I had left, and time was of the essence as I was running out of oxygen. I grabbed what little I could, a knife, a flashlight, and another gun. I couldn't get any of the doors or hatches on the ship to open, I think due to lack of power, so I wound up exiting through the same hole that caused this unfortunate accident. I slipped out into the darkness and immediately felt uneasy, even though staying in the wreck was certain death. I wanted to get a good look at the ship from the outside, but I knew every second was precious, so I began to swim, and swim, and swim.
Until finally the endless void gave way to a familiar shape, a square. I couldn't believe it. I had actually made it up to the station, but I didn't have much time. My oxygen was running dangerously low, but I saw a door and there was a button on the outside. This was it. I had made it to safety and I could now attempt to assemble a new crew. But then the door didn't open, and neither did the nearby hatch. I was inches away from warmth and safety, but I was locked out and no one inside even knew it. I fought to find another door, but it was too late. This was not the first crew claimed by the European Abyss, and it certainly would not be the last. In the end, I had failed to keep my crew alive, but I had a lot of fun playing this game, and I think it's something I'll definitely play more of in the future. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Whether you are new to this channel or you've been here watching my Tarkov videos, I would love to hear your feedback. Uh, what'd you think of this? Because it's, you know, my first time trying to make a video like this on anything that isn't Tarkov, so I'm sure there is a lot that can be improved on, and your feedback will help a lot with that. And to anyone worried that, you know, Tarkov isn't going to continue just because I made a video on a different game, don't worry, I've got plenty more Tarkov planned. Uh, you know, I've been playing a lot this wipe, trying to get footage for different uh, bigger projects, but I also want to branch out a little bit, and so this is a little attempt at that. Uh, so hopefully it's enjoyable, and again, Thank you so much for supporting this channel. It means the world to me. But I want to keep this brief, so I think that's everything from me. Anyways, remember to take care of yourself and have a good night.